Hello and welcome. In this video we'll be making a car system. When we get near to it, it asks us if we want to enter it and if we press the key we can enter it. And then if we press this key again we can leave it. So the first thing we're going to do is set up so our character does his driving animation when he's in the car. So we're going to go to our animations and if we go to our third person character's animation blueprint. And where all his animations are. We're going to create a new variable and call this driving and this will control whether our character does his driving animation or not. I'm just going to drag my character's driving animation. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download it and we'll just plug these in. And if we go into this, we want to drag our driving variable. So if our driving variable is true, our character is going to start to enter his driving animation and we'll get the driving and not. So if this is not true, we'll go back to our normal or animations so we'll just plug that in and compile so next we're going to go to our third person character and set up a few things so we're going to right click and event begin play we're going to get our mesh we're going to get our anim instance so that we can create a reference to the animation we just created so i'm going to cast our third person character's animation blueprint and from this, I'm going to promote this to a variable called animations, as we're going to be referencing this when we use the car later. And in the character, I'm going to make the E key, because this is going to be the key that we're going to use to get in and out of the key. So when the E key is pressed, we're going to create a new variable called E is being pressed. And it's going to let us know that the E key is being pressed. So when we press E, we're going to set E is being pressed to true. And it's going to allow us to know that the key is being pressed. And then we're going to delay, so 0.5 seconds, and then it will set the E being pressed or not true anymore. And we'll need this to know whether the key is being pressed to allow us to enter the car. So we'll just compile to save that. So next we're going to set up the car. So if we click to add new, we're going to add a feature or content pack, and we're just going to click on the vehicle. This is the vehicle we're going to be adding, and we'll click add to project, and we'll just add the vehicle to our project. So next, what we're going to do is find our sedan and we want to go to its skeletal mesh. And once we're here, we're going to right click and add socket. And I'm just going to call this seat. So this will be where our character is when he's in the car. So we just want to position this correctly. So I'll just move this up a bit and to the left. And if we right click and click add preview asset, we can select the S key main icon. And this will be roughly where our character is when he's in the car. I'm going to leave him a bit up because he'll be bent when he's sitting in the car. So just position this to how you want to. And we'll be able to adjust this later if it's not looking correct at the end. So next what you want to do is find the car's blueprint. So it's in sedan and stand blueprint cars. So and we're here. So next we're going to go to the viewport and set a few things up. So if we go to add component, I'm going to add box collision. And this is the collision that will tell us whether our player is in this range and if he's able to enter the car. So I'll just position this up and a bit there. Then I'm going to add a text render. So this will just show the text where he's getting in the car. Whoops, I'll just create that again. So text render, and this will be the press E to get into the car. It will display that te text. And you just want to position it so that the player can see it. So I'm just going to move mine. Rotate it up. And then... Oops. In the text option, you just want to select press E to get into the car or whatever button you've pressed. So now that we've got that all set up, we just can compile and go to event graph. And then what we want to do is, by default, we want to set the press E's visibility and we don't want it to be visible so that we can only see it when we're within this box collisions range. So we're going to add event, add on component we can overlap. So when our character, so we're going to cast our third person character, so when our character enters this box, it's going to show this text. So if we get this text and then we're going to set its visibility and we'll just plug this in and select new visibility. So now I'll show that text once we're in that box. And we're going to set a timer by event. So we'll plug this in and this is going to 
cause an event which will check what to see whether we're in the car. So I'm just going to add a custom event and this will check to see if we can get in the car. And on the time, I'm going to select 0.3 and select looping. So once we get in this box, it's going to check this event every second and we'll finish that off in a second. So on the box, on component and overlap, again we'll cast our third person character. So when our character leaves this box, we're going to make it so that we can't see the text anymore. So we'll just set the visibility of this text and set it unchecked so that we can't see it. So now that we've got that, we can set the other stuff. So what this getting car event is going to do, first we're going to get a branch and we're going to see if the text is visible. Because if the text is visible, that means we're within range and can get in the car. So get is visible, and if this is true, what we will do is create another branch to see that if E is being pressed. So as the third person character, we can check is E being pressed, that variable that we created earlier. So scroll down, get E is being pressed. And if this is true, then we're gonna set up so we can enter the car and drive it and all that stuff. So what we'll first do is set the character so that his collision, so that he has no collision so that you can't glide with the car, otherwise it looks a bit dodgy and can be a bit weird. And after that we're just going to drag off the third person character again. And we'll get the animation, that variable that we created earlier. And from here we can set driving as he'll be in the car. So we'll just plug that and tick that box so that our character will do his driving animation. So next we're going to get attached to component, so we're going to attach our car to our player and we'll just plug this in and the parent is going to be the mesh so we'll just drag this and plug this in and the target, what we'll be attaching it to is the third person character so we'll just plug that in there and then on location roll we want to snap to target so we just want to instantly get our character to go to this location and I forgot the socket name that I called it, so I'm just going to go back and look for it. So in Sedan, and in its skeletal mesh, the socket was called seat. So if you go to that, and the socket name we want to attach it to, so seat, and we'll move to this location once we're attached to the car. So then we're going to get the possess, and plug this in, and the pawn is self, so we'll the thing we'll be possessing is the car itself and for target we need to get the player controller so who will be controlling and now we'll possess the car when we overlap that box and press E so now we need to make it so that we can leave the car when we want to and again that key is going to be E to leave the car so I'll look for the E key and just find it and E and when this is pressed we're going to make it unpossess Car. So we'll look for the unpossess, and for the target, we'll get player controller, and then we'll just plug this in. Then what we need to do is detach from the actor, so we're not still attached to the car. So I'll just plug this in, and this time we want to keep world, so we want to keep the world location of our character once he leaves the car. So we'll just strike keep world, and we'll just plug that for the target so it knows what we're detaching and then we will need to possess the third person character again so if we look for the possess in pawn we're just going to drag that as that's the thing we're going to be possessing and then target we're going to get the player controller and then we will just plug this in and then we need to make it so that we're not doing our driving animation again. So we'll reference this and we'll set driving and we'll just leave that unchecked. And then for the collision, we need to make it so that our character does have a collision again once he's gone out of the car. So we will set collision enabled. And on the collision type, we're going to set this to collision enabled and just plug this in. And if we click compile, this should all work now. So now if we just drag in our car, 
and I'm just going to delete this so we have space to move around roughly and if we click play now if we move and press E now we can get on our car and drive our character's location looks a bit off so I'm going to look into that so I found that in the sedan blueprint all we need to do is make sure that everything snaps to target mine was on keep weld so I forgot to make it all snap to target so now if we press E our character is now in the car but I found that he was at a weird rotation so if you go into the sedan skeletal mesh if we rotate the socket like 90 degrees and then close he will now be in the correct rotation so now when we go to the car we can press E to get in and we can now drive our car and turn it and, and, and leave if we want to and that's all for now. Uh, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. It helps out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.